All right, this is going to be our first drawing that we're ever going to do in Inventor. Uh, some of these lessons that we do, they were created by other teachers, and so there'll be t certain files, and it'll be noted that they're there. I'll show you some how they specifically explain to do it, and I'll show you a couple of little, all of the little methods that I do here, because as we change and as mo Inventor modifies, it's like, for example, a lot of their lessons show you that you use the grid. Well, you don't necessarily need to use the grid anymore, but I will show you how to get it and go turn it on if you're one of those people that need it. Now, we've watched the videos so that we know how it works, and we've answered the little question of Moodle. Here is a download link. What I need you to do with this link is I need you to download it and save it to your drive. So mine's going into here, and I should have an inventor, and I want you to save to save that into your folder. All right, so now we're going to go through and we're going to draw. And you can watch this video, but I'm fixing to show you how to do this. Here's the website. Here's our video instructions. Here's what we're drawing in 3D. Here's what we're going to create into the 2D. And if you click on the link at the bottom, that takes you to the PDF. So everything I'm doing, I'm getting those steps and instructions from here. I'm just showing you in the video how to do it. Now I'm going to drag instructions over to my right-hand screen so that I can work here on the left-hand screen. So I'm going to go find Inventor Professional 2014 English and let it open up. We're going to be starting off by creating a part. So we're going to be creating a new part. So we're going to do English part, assembly, drawing, presentation. So those are different parts that we do. You have to think of this differently. In AutoCAD, you draw everything together. In Inventor, we create each part separately, then we assemble them together, and, and then we send them to the drawing file, and then we animate them or do whatever we need to do with them. Right now, I'm just going to create a standard part. And we're going to hope that it actually works here. Come on, sometimes it's a little slower than others. There we go. Okay. First thing I want to do is I want to go to my eye properties and I want to change it. Now, it doesn't really make so much of a big difference now as it does later. So you want to get into the habit of setting your eye properties up. Because it's going to make a big difference when you start creating assemblies and putting things together later and put them in exploded views and etc. Subject, uh, whatever class period, engineering and design. Author will be your first and last name. Manager is your teacher, Baxter. Company. And there's lots of different things that we could go in and change. We could say file location, um, the designer. So there's lots of different things that we can go on. Creation dates, status, complete. There's lots of different ones we can do. But right now, we're mainly concerned with the summary and changing these. So I'm going to apply and click OK. Next thing that we want to do is they show you how to go and change your snap and your grid so that you can set up your grid. So I'm going to show you how to do that. You don't have to do it because you don't have to use the grid. Um, actually, about three or four years ago, it got to the point where I stopped using the grid because it worked better for me. But some people prefer the grid. So I'm going to show you how to get there. So I go to Tools. And it's either going to be under Application Options or Document Settings. So you have to go look in each other. And I would go here. So for an example, under here, I can change my save time to 5. So once I've started something and I open it up, I can set it to 5 or whatever, and it's going to save so often. File, where do I want it to save? Well, I don't want it to save there, but when you click a Save As, it'll go there. Color, you can change it to one color. Gradient, whatever you want. You can change it to different. Different people like different presentations. I have a lot of students that seem to like the one color and they really like the high contrast and they, because they can see it better on the screen. I actually prefer presentation paper. It, present, it works better for me. I, it doesn't really matter, but this is a place where you can go and change those colors to make it more comfortable for you. Sketch, this is where you can tell it if you want to show grade lines or not. So with it turned off, they will not show up. With it turned on, they will. So I'll show you what it looks like when they're turned on. Or I'll have to do a sketch and show you. But that's where we can turn them on and off with. Uh, and I'll create a sketch in a minute and show you. Document settings. This is where you can change your units and your sketch. So this is where I would change that 1.125 and 1 and 1. Now it didn't really do a lot, but when I create my 2D sketch now, I create it on this Y surface there. If I go back into my tools, and tell it to show grid lines. Now you have grid lines. So see, that's what it does. 
That's all it really does. So you can decide, do you like the grid or not? It doesn't really matter to each their own. I've actually gotten to the point now that, that the grid sometimes give me a little bit of a headache and I get a little confused sometimes. So I, I prefer to not use it now. All right, so we're going to create the Maltese cross. To start with it first, we need to start drawing it. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw exactly a one and a half by one and a half inch square. This is where students get a little, whoa, we get to do what? Okay, if you're used to drawing an AutoCAD where you have to tell it specifically what you want it to be, well, I want you to notice that I didn't worry about that. I just drew it. And then I'm going to go here and I'm going to dimension this and I'm going to pull it up. And I want it to be 1.5. It automatically adjusts 1.5. Here are your constraint tools. We could use these in AutoCAD, but we use them a lot when we're doing parametric modeling. And the one I'm going to use specifically this time is I say equal. So I want this side to equal this side. So no matter what I change this to, if I change this dimension here to 6, it's going to change the whole thing to 6. So they're connected. So it's going to change both sides. So I've did that on purpose. There's my zoom extends and zoom out a little bit more and pan over. There we go. So they are constrained each other. So you can use your different constraints. Concentric, if you move it around, parallel, perpendicular, tangent, etc. It'll it'll give you these. I need a line going across the center. Across the center. And I'm going to move it so that my point of origin is perfectly on the zero zero. So I'm going to move from the center here to that center there. Okay. Now, the next thing is I need a line out here that's two inches away from that point of reference. So I'm not worried about drawing anything. Notice I just draw it and then I dimension it. After I dimension it, I type in what it needs to be and it automatically draws it in. My next step is we need two lines coming from these corners out and they need to have an angle of 105. Again, I'm not worried about drawing it perfectly because I'm going to go back and dimension. Now I am worried about, see, it didn't snap, so that is not going to work. Let's delete that and try again. So you do want to look for that little green light that lets you know that it made the connection. I literally only have to go to the dimension tool, line, line, 105. Then I'm going to use my trim tool. Unlike an AutoCAD, you don't have to hit the space bar to select everything. You just get it on there. Okay, perfect. Excellent. So now we have those outlined and put on. Our next step is we don't want to have to keep drawing these on each side to get them there. So we're going to use a pattern tool. We're going to mirror it. Now in AutoCAD, your mirror is here. Under here in Inventor, it's under the pattern tools here. So you've got perpendicular, circular, and now we're going to do regular mirror. So I'm going to pick the objects I want to mirror. And then I'm going to select mirror line, and I'm going to pick this line, and click apply. So I repeat that process. I select what I want to mirror, I select the mirror line, and apply. And then we continue this process around. And I'm going to, remember, you can hold your scroll wheel in the middle of your mouse, and that lets you pan. Because I want to select these objects, and this is my mirror line. And apply. All right. Our next step, after we've mirrored everything around, is we're going to want to dimension it and make sure that it stays to four inches. So what I'm going to do is zoom out here. I want to make sure that that is four. And if you want to double check, you can also check this and notice it's four. And the reason it's four is because we um, constrained it together to make it equal, so it stays together the whole time. Now I'm just going to click here. I like I right click and then I'm going to delete. So you can select this with your mouse and delete or you can right click delete. Doesn't really matter. We just want to get rid of these because we do not need them anymore. Okay, now we're going to offset. So just like an AutoCAD, it's a little thumb, it's offset. But unlike an AutoCAD, you don't have to tell it the distance. So you just tell it which way do you want it to go. So I'm just going to offset it towards the inside. And then our offset distance on this one is 1.125. So I dimension it. Doesn't really matter where you pick it from. Type it in and place it there. So when I change that dimension, zoom in here, see it automatically changes to 0.125 and it changed it all the way around. All right, so once we've done that, we are essentially done with our sketch. So we're going to finish our sketch and we're going to go make it two dimensional. So I'm going to click on my finished sketch. 
and it looks here. Now, do not panic. It automatically goes into presentation view. If I was opening this up to work on it again, I could just click here, uh, double click on sketch, and it activates the sketch again. So don't panic if that happens to you. All right, we're going to do an extrusion, and I'm going to click that part of the surface, and I'm going to turn it sideways so you can see what's going on. All right, I've got it set to one inch, and currently it's coming out. I could tell it, it could go backwards, or I could tell it center. I actually like to do the symmetrical where it's going both ways. It's a personal preference. And you can also change your material type. It doesn't show you this in the PowerPoint, but you can go in and you can change your material types to different things. And Orbit tools, so I can spin it around so I can look at it. So here's my Maltese cross. Now I want to save it into that folder. And it's going to go into, it's going to be, make sure it's in the right folder. Yeah, it's the right folder. Maltese cross, EDP. I'll just pretend like a six period. And that's what it now, if you try to do that save as again, a lot of times it says you can't do that because it's the same name. So once you've done that save as, you should be able to click on the save button and it's going to work. So here's our cross. Now we want to take this cross and put it into the title block because we don't want to start all over again. So I'm going to go open, Baxter. Enter, looking for that Enter folder. I'm looking for the CHS title block. Open. And now we want to place that into here. So we want to dimension it and we want to place it into the title block. Okay, you ready? Super hard. Base. We're wanting to get that engineering. We're going to get the front view. And I place it here. I move my mouse up and click, move my mouse to the right click, I move it over here, click, and actually and technically we don't need the right side view, we can just do the top view. I right click create, and I'm actually going to get rid of this view. Let me see if it says to do that in instructions or not. Oh, we're going to change the scale, okay. I'm going to double click on this and I'm going to change my scale from a one to one to half. See so it's a smaller scale, I move it over, double click, Pass scale. And I'm actually going to turn it to shaded. There we go. So it fits all in here. So my scale in this particular case, right click, edit the definition, scale is a 1 to 2, so it's a half scale. And I finish the sketch and say yes. Notice that down here it already says Conroe High School, it already says your class, it already says all that. The reason it says that is because your eye properties. Remember when I said it wasn't important right then, but it would be important later? That's why. Whatever you have it defined here is going to be linked automatically into your title block here. Once I have it in here, our next step is we want to dimension it. And so annotate, just like we're working in AutoCAD. And pick what it needs to be. And that's interesting that it says it's that. If I go in here to the extrusion and click on the sketch, it says it's four. Okay. Oh, I can go ahead and show you something while I'm here. Sorry. If I do for some reason decide I want to change this to like five, and don't know why I'd want to do that. And I save it. Notice how it's updated here because they're linked. Now, obviously, that's not what I wanted to do. But you can do that because they're linked together. They're parametric. They're working together. So if it does come off with you there, that's all right. Dimension, this distance here. And if you needed to know the angles, it should let me pick like that and it should pull it out. And of course, it doesn't want to now that I'm trying to demonstrate. It should let us do that, but it's going to be a pain in the butt right now. And if I needed to change my scale, if I double click, I came here and I put it back to one to one. See how it automatically changes it so I could come in here and I could delete that view because technically we don't need it. 
And as I move that view around, see, it's going to keep everything together. And I can move them around just that simply by grabbing them and dragging them where they need to go. So it's just that simple to change part of your drawing when you're working in Inventor. And then, of course, I need to save that. And I would call it Title Block. Oops. Maltese. Cross. And I'm going to print it. WPDF. OK. It's going to ask you where do you want to save it. So you go save it in that same folder. I'm going to put mine on the desktop just for a quick please to show you. And I want you to see what it looks like. And here it is. Now, the black and white's great, but this is not so great, right? So let's do that again. Print properties. And what I want to do is I want to go check quality default standards there we go I want to go to a high quality print and tell it okay and now I want to show you what it looks like this time now I'll notice it looks a lot better so sometimes you have to pay attention to those kind of things all right congratulations problem one and inventor